Aspettiamo un attimo. Ok. Va benissimo, sì, sì. Uh, ok, inizio la registrazione. Abbiamo uh, la registrazione della prima parte della lezione di 11 novembre. Uh, abbiamo questa richiesta di rivedere la disuguaglianza di Cibishev. Uh, piuttosto quale parte di Cibishev uh, non è capita? Sì, che cosa si stima e come si stima? Probabilmente. Ok, uh, rispondo a questa, risposta, a questa domanda, possiamo ripetere questo conto. Uh, ma nel frattempo prima vorrei uh, mh, presentare uh, un uh, articolo che mh, eventualmente più tardi ritorne, uh, possiamo tornare e vedere uh, la, il contenuto principale. Ok, uh, non so se vedete uh, il mio schermo, passo alla... Abbiamo Maria Laura, abbiamo uh, articolo su coronavirus. Ok, uh, si vede uh, lo schermo? Potete vederlo? Sì. Ok. Praticamente qui... Um, è uh, dottoressa Maria Laura Manca che ha iniziato questo mh, studio, lei è specialista di uh, analisi statistici e qui mh, abbiamo mh, uh, una cosa che dobbiamo chiarire durante mh, uh, Bayesian Change Point Detection. So we shall switch to English because this was... Uh, necessary in our course. We shall understand what is this uh, Bayesian. Um, uh, sorry? La richiesta per? Ah, ok, per Meet. Uh, che cosa devo fare? Uh, per Meet o per Team? Ah, per Meet. Ok, un attimo per entrare ok a metti uh, guardiamo se uh, si vede l'articolo ecco qui si usano dati ufficiali e praticamente mh, si fa un'analisi statistico del mh, uh, curve of uh, hospitalizations and uh, I especially want to uh, show you different tables that uh, are connected with uh, this uh, uh, let us see here So probably it is not very clear because uh, the resolution is not very high. But uh, as you can see on the uh, horizontal line is the time, while in the red uh, uh, graphic, I think this is hospitalization number of uh, person that are hospital uh, in the hospital uh, actually uh, these uh, curves uh, are connected with uh, what we started the last time we said that uh, some data can be represented with graphics and uh, you have clearly to understand what is on horizontal line what is on ver vertical line and uh, i think uh, after uh, following our um, 
lectures, we have to turn back to this article to understand uh, uh, what kind of uh, statistical analysis is uh, used and then to understand uh, eventually the data from these uh, graphics. For the moment, uh, I simply explained uh, we have graphical representation. Uh, I think uh, at the end, uh, uh, using uh, the data and using appropriate software, you can be able to produce similar uh, results and make uh, such an analysis. Okay, now I turn back to and uh, here uh, after explanation of the um, uh, method that we have to understand uh, after. Uh, the key point is uh, Bayesian change point detection methodology. So uh, this uh, is uh, purely variational method. Uh, uh, we shall partially uh, try to understand uh, what is behind this, but from the very beginning, I can say that you have appropriate software packages that are used in this case. So you only have to know what is uh, the package and uh, roughly speaking to understand, for example, you see in the mid part of our uh, screen is explained Gaussian distribution. Probably this is one of the key points in our um, second part lectures to understand what is Gaussian distribution and uh, this Gaussian distribution uh, very often is used. Uh, we can say that uh, parameters that are used in this Gaussian distribution should be very important and we shall uh, try to uh, understand uh, what is uh, Gaussian function and Gaussian distribution. So uh, this was uh, simply to uh, show you kind of uh, final um, part of our course, we have to uh, understand uh, a little bit uh, the main uh, uh, methods, tools that are used, what kind of probability density is uh, applied. Uh, because uh, sometimes uh, you start with uh, your idea what is the probability density and then you have to compare it with real results. If the results of the real uh, data is not the same as the result of theoretical base, uh, for example, Gaussian distribution, then we have to correct our theoretical model. But to understand this theoretical model, we have to know what kind of distributions we have, what kind of basis of prob probability we know, and in the same time we shall uh, study, uh, we started already to study our empirical data, statistical data that uh, should be compatible with our theoretical model. Uh, here are the conclusions uh, and uh, I shall not go now in details. I wanted to show you uh, what is the purpose of our course. When you see article that is written in this uh, form, in order to understand the article, you shall know, you should know the basis of uh, probability, what is probability density. So we need this language in order not to be mathematicians and to make uh, uh, research in this direction, but to understand this language. Therefore, uh, we start now the uh, part of probability. But since uh, we had uh, already with this data analysis, this is not probability, this is data analysis. We have some data and we analyze this data. For example, we take median, we take the arithmetic average, and we arrive to Chebyshev inequality. So let me repeat again the Chebyshev inequality. But now I shall stop sharing. Again, I turn to all participants uh, here in uh, Aula. There is uh, this uh, requirement to see again Chibishev inequality. Uh, 
Uh, by the way, do you have um, uh, this book that uh, I am using uh, for my lectures on probability? Do you have uh, this uh, book that is written, by the way, in Italian? If you have difficulty to find it, uh, I can at least some partial PDF file have from the part of the lectures we are uh, following. So please try to find uh, this uh, PDF file of the book or uh, DJ Wu is also okay for reading this format is DJ Wu format of the file is okay. And uh, you can partially follow uh, our lectures using the book, but you can compare with our calculations. So let us turn back to uh, our uh, uh, Chebyshev uh, inequality. And let us follow the same calculations that uh, we did uh, the last time. So, uh, can you help me to see uh, this, uh, what is the calculation that was uh, with question? If you say me, what I remember is uh, the quantity S, that was the deviation. I call this also D of uh, our data. That was uh, given by uh, sum of uh, fj minus f bar square. We take the sum j from 1 to n divided by what was in denominator n minus 1. And all this shall be taken on power one half, or if you prefer, square root. This was the definition of the deviation. So, uh, what was uh, Chebyshev inequality? Chebyshev inequality measure a certain set. What is the set? Now, for this inequality, we take the set of those indices J such that uh, when you take uh, this difference uh, f j minus f let us see absolute value was smaller than what was the upper bound this is important to know so we have practically to see for our fj, after taking the mean value, what are the uh, data that have distance from f that is uh, smaller than kappa s? To understand this set that we denote by s kappa, let us try some example. For example, let us take our set f to be one, three, four, two, and six. These are our data. This is uh, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. Our five data. Can you make a uh, calculation with uh, F bar? So this is one corresponds one, two corresponds three. 3 corresponds 4, 4 corresponds 2, and 5, F5 is 6. So, what is F bar? We take the sum of all guys and divide by 5. What is the sum? 16, if I am not mistaken. Divided by 5 is giving... 16 divided by 5, uh, this is 3 point, uh, I think, 2. Three point two. Is it? If I'm not mistaken, so I'm doing by my calculator, you are doing by... Uh, 
Correct. Very good. So let us compute the deviation. This is good exercise with this example. What is the deviation S? I have to take um, uh, this minus this squared because I have this guy. So we have 2.2 squared is the first term. Then we have this minus this plus 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.8 squared. This is third and then plus 1.2 squared. Probably I shall need to make more rota small rotation. And the last guy is 2.8 squared. All this shall be divided by what is in the denominator? Four. Uh, then we have to take, I put S square. Let us compute first S square. What is your uh, calculator is uh, saying? Let us check. Uh, please, uh, you can help me also via internet. What is uh, S square? Here we need. Three point seven could be. Let us see your uh, other calculators. But because we can start on it as well. Because we don't have the scientific calculator. No, this is. Uh, it takes a lot. Really. Takes a lot. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Three point seven. There is confirmation. Three point seven. But this is uh, without square root. Okay. Three point seven. I trust you. Because my capabilities are very limited. So. Uh, square root of 3.7, what is S? 1.92. S is 1.92. Yeah, I approximate it. It's yes, let, let me say approximately because rigorously mathematicians don't like equality. This is not true. Okay. So we know approximately S. Let us take and see what is our set S1. S1 means to find indexes J such that the difference Fj minus F bar, we shall make a test, is smaller than if kappa is 1, we have only S, 1.92. Let us check what does it mean. For any J, we make this test. So, what is F bar? F bar is 3.2. Let us take the first element. 1. 3.2 minus 1 is 2.2. We are asking if 2.2 is smaller than 1.92. No, this is not true. Therefore, j equal 1 is not in this set. Let us take 2. 2 is 3. The difference is 0 0.2. So, 2 belongs to this set. Because when j is 2, when you take f2, 3 minus 3.2 is 0 0.2. And you check in your test. 0 0.2 is smaller than 1.9. So 2 is inside. 3 should be inside. Let us check. What do you think? Take j equal 3, substitute. This is your test. 
So three is inside or not inside? Is inside. So you confirm that also three is inside four. Also, you have 1.2 is smaller than 1.9, so also 4 is inside. And what about 6, uh, fifth term, 6? No. It is not. Therefore, here we have these three elements, not the whole set from 1 to n is inside, but we have very uh, precise elements. Uh, instead of uh, five elements, we have three elements. So this is the set S1. We can set S1 is what is the practical problem you solve with this set? You are asking how many data shall be close to your average with error given by this kappa s so kappa s is the error the distance uh, that uh, should be upper bound of the distance between your good data and the average if your data is a distance less than this kappa s from the average then you're in your set s1 and you are asking how many elements has this set because these are elements that are close to your average in some sense in which sense is written here so the distance between your data and the average is bounded by this quantity when kappa is uh, one we calculate it s1 if we go to s2 let us try to see s2 we again ask though j such that modulus of fj minus l bar is smaller than two times s but two times s will give us 3.84 if i am not mistaken something of this type you see bigger is the error more elements eventually you shall have what well, this means if you have element in s1 this should be obligatory also here therefore you have here is your s1 and eventually s2 shall be bigger set this uh, we can write mathematically with the following s1 is subset of s2 and Chebyshev inequality measures the number of elements in these sets S1, S2, S3. And here we can say, in any case, kappa shall be uh, something that uh, uh, when S in our case is fixed, 1.92, how many kappas uh, is meaningful? For example, here we have 3.84. If kappa is 3, this shall become 8, uh, no, 5 something. Almost 6. Almost 6, this means all elements shall be there. So bigger kappa uh, you choose uh, your uh, set s kappa shall coincide with the set for example if we take s3 we can immediately say that s3 is one two three four and five keep in mind that is in, in s kappa we have indices j we, number, we measure how many data are close to the average. We don't put here the data. And we want to show how many elements has this set.
you can make uh, the calculation with S2. Uh, since already we know that 2, 3, and 4 are inside uh, S1, since S1 is included is, is S2, we don't need to check uh, for these elements. They obligatory shall be in S2 also. Let us check the first element, 1. We have 1 minus 3.2. This was 2.2. 2.2 satisfies? Yes. So S2 is formed. Now we can describe 1, 2, 3, 4. It remains to check only for 5. But for 5, we have 6 minus 3.2 is um, 2.8. 2.8 compared with uh, 3.8 of course, is satisfied this property. Therefore, we immediately can say that S2 is formed by all elements. This calculation changes from problem to problem, but Chebyshev inequality always shows you some lower bound for this set, S kappa, for any kappa. This is the meaning of Chebyshev inequality. So you don't need to make calculations like we did. We simply have to measure with Chebyshev inequality. The problem is to take our set S kappa and to measure, evaluate number of elements in S kappa. For this, if uh, the examples are, are clear, and this S kappa as set is clear, I shall clean the examples and shall turn to the proof of uh, Chebyshev inequality. So if you have some questions for these practical uh, examples, please do put your, hands up, your questions. Otherwise, I shall clean this part and we shall go to the next step. So I am completely convinced that uh, for your numerical simulation you need a simple calculator, but not a very complicated software, only calculator that uh, if you know what you are looking with these simple manipulations, you can find the number and make simplify calculations. But you have to do them very, I would suggest, very slowly and carefully, because at the beginning you haven't such experience. Okay. Now. In order to measure this set, Chebyshev inequality, uh, we said, evaluates this set. How we shall, uh, I prefer first to write again the proof of Chebyshev inequality and then to write precisely the Chebyshev inequality. Because Chebyshev inequality simply uh, means that we have to use the definition of uh, the deviation. We simply take the, de the deviation and do very simple thing. We take deviation squared. So how this can be I see nella pausa prendo serve un po' di carta semplice asciutta. Ok, questo non va bene. Se avete un Ecco, adesso si può vedere che l'effetto di un fazzoletto è incredibile. Ok, adesso. Abbiamo adesso detto la definizione S al quadrato. 
proprio il colore diverso e tutto si vede meglio. Qual era la definizione? Abbiamo una sommatoria di fj minus f al quadrato tutto diviso a n-1, dovevamo dividere n-1, io preferisco scriverlo qui a sinistra, perché è la stessa cosa, j tra 1 e n. Che cosa possiamo dire per uh, questa somma? Questa somma certamente sono tutti elementi 1, 2 fino a n. Che cosa facciamo in questo insieme? Dividiamolo. Noi sappiamo che SK è praticamente un sottoinsieme. So, allora, uh, therefore, we can represent this set as SK plus or union with complementary set of s -cap. What does it mean? If you have a set, complementary set is the set of those elements that are not in s -cap. So, mathematical notation for complementary set is s -cap complementary. Geometrically, we can say, okay, this is our set 1, 2, up to n. What we are doing? This set we divide in two subsets, S kappa, that is formed by only by those indices J for which the distance by the data and the average is small and the other set that is s kappa complementary so what is complementary set complementary set s kappa complementary how we can determine those j for which this is not true because complementary something that is not satisfied means that uh, we have to say this is not true but this is the moment to say uh, can you make uh, say something is not true rigorously for example it is raining how you shall say this is not true let me see you what you propose. I am saying it is raining. Please to say me this is not true. What does it mean? Ma noi siamo nella vita reale, lasciamo perdere. Io dico piove. I am saying it is raining. So we have assertion A. What does it mean A is not true? Is not raining, of course. Not A means that this is not true. So if the assertion is raining, uh, negare. Uh, this uh, assertion saying no means it is not rain. If you have this inequality true, if you want to say this inequality is not true, what you have to write? This is not true, what does it mean? We have opposite inequality. So this is those J such that fj minus f bar is bigger or equal than kappa s. This means our assertion is not true. During the break, I should ask you to say no to the following assertion. 
if it is raining, I take umbrella. How you shall say this is not true? If there is a correct answer, I shall put red point. So, my assertion is, if it is raining, I take umbrella. This is my assertion. If it is raining, then I take umbrella. What does it mean? This is not true. It is important in mathematics to say assertion is not true. Therefore, in the break, please to answer, at least to try to answer, uh, to be sure uh, and uh, to say, to explain why I shall put red point. This question I posed also to students of mathematics. And they had difficulty. First year students, how to mathematicians, future mathematicians. Real life problem, raining, I take umbrella. What is the meaning? This is not true. Please think a little bit, because to say assertion is not true is part of the logic. To have good uh, basis of the logical assertion, this is also important. But here the situation is simple. Complementary set is those j for which fj minus f is bigger or equal. This is not true, means this. Okay, we shall turn to the rain. Hopefully it is not raining. But we have proposal for red point. So, what we shall do here? We shall use this uh, summation and we shall divide our set into subsets. This means we shall have two groups in our sum. One sum is over S kappa and the other part is over complementary set. So we can write that this is sum always Fj minus F bar square. Here we take S kappa plus sum fj minus f bar square over s kappa complementary. Always when your set from 1 to n is divided into complementary sets, you can decompose your sum in two pieces. If you decompose your set from 1 to n in three complementary sets, then instead of two sums, you shall have three. And you put here, J belongs to S kappa, J belongs to S kappa complementary. Actually, for probability, it is important to use uh, the notions of the sets. In this case, we already uh, used set and complementary set when we are in this uh, set from one to n. And now we simply apply, uh, we need to estimate um, S kappa we have to estimate S kappa from below. This is Chibishev. We know that Chibishev, at least you should remember that this is this set estimated from below. So we have two possibilities to estimate this guy from below. Uh, we have a possibility to estimate this term thanks to this, because here we can use this inequality. Here, unfortunately, we cannot estimate this guy from below. So the important thing to remember is that you estimate this deviation from below. And if you estimate from below, you can use only this estimate. So you apply this estimate, while this term 
to be estimated from below is quite simple. Any square is bigger or equal than zero. Therefore, if we want to estimate from below, this is the most important part in Chebyshev inequality, you take your deviation and estimate from below. And you replace this by zero. And this guy you replace by kappa s squared. Because you know that absolute value of this guy is bigger than kappa s. So if you put here square, here you shall have kappa square s square. And we say, right, zero, because the first sum is estimated from the low by zero, while the second is sum j belongs to s kappa complementary yes and here we have uh, kappa square s square and um, i didn't get why the first term is bigger we are certain because any square is bigger than zero. Okay. whatever whatever you take this is very basic inequality the basis of everything in mathematics. Always the square is bigger or equal than zero. We do not replace by zero. We estimate from below. This was the part that was missing. This inequality is the basis. So I replace this with zero. And for these guys, we use this inequality. Take the square and estimate by its kappa square s square. Each of these squares is bounded from the wall. And I didn't change anything else. So this is very important part to understand. This inequality, because the remaining part is much simpler. Now, in one, two minutes, we shall finish uh, the proof and then we shall make a break. But before uh, going further, let me uh, again turn to this relation and uh, ask you, how many elements has this set? This set has n elements. If we know that uh, S kappa, that is a subset of this N, has this number of elements. Uh, let us call this, uh, for example, small a. Small a is the number of elements of S kappa. And I know that here elements are N. How many elements has complementary set? Exactly, n minus a. So from here, you can say that the complementary set has exactly n minus a. That was the number of s. This is important relation that shall be used. We always shall use, if you take a set, complementary set, the sum of these two sets is the whole set that has n elements. Therefore, the sum of these two guys is n. Therefore, this, we have this. Now, we can say, look at this sum. Kappa square s square is independent of j. So I can put this outside. I write this like. I continue here, the end of the proof. We have kappa square s square sum j belongs to s kappa complementary of one. And you can say me, what is this? How many addends we have? The addends are determined by number of elements in s kappa complementary. But what is this number? 
already is computed. So we have equal kappa square S square, and then we put number of elements in the complementary set because we have to sum over this. This is always uh, true. If you have here set of indexes, if you take sum of one when j belongs to this uh, set, always this is the number of elements in this set because one is repeated how many times? How many elements we have in this set? And we have this relation. And to this end, if we call this relation one, we can plug inside and write kappa square s square and here we have n minus cardinality of s cap. Sometimes number of elements in some set, some set, mathematicians are called cardinality of this set or number of elements. This is the same name. So this is cardinality. or number of elements of our set. So from time to time, I'm using, uh, without uh, thinking, use a word that probably now I explain cardinality means number of elements. What we get is left-hand side is this one, right-hand side is this one. Uh, if you don't mind, I shall clean the first line above shall rewrite this inequality and this is finally the Chebyshev inequality. We shall simplify and from this inequality we have as conclusion the Chebyshev inequality. So let me clean the definition of the deviation. And let us uh, write, uh, first of all, we have n minus 1 s square is bigger or equal than kappa square s square. And then we have n minus cardinality of s cap. This is our, all these two lines. We have this inequality. And now we shall simplify. What simplification we can do? A square cancel. Left and the right is cancelled. Divide by um, kappa square and then we get n minus 1 over kappa square bigger or equal n minus cardinality of s cap. Now, what we can do, remember, S kappa, we have to estimate from below. S kappa we put on the left, all other guys on the right to get Chebyshev inequality. So, from this, we have cardinality of S kappa is bigger than n minus n minus 1 over kappa squared. To have more beautiful conclusion of Chebyshev inequality, uh, let us say that uh, we can uh, estimate uh, actually in the book it was written this cardinality divided by n. They prefer to use uh, this cardinality divided by n because 
as kappa is some subset of n, and you, you want to see what portion of the total set, because the set of from 1 to n is n elements, what portion of this set is inside this the total set. So, for example, if this is one half, you know that this is half of the elements of this set. And if we write in this form, then we get uh, S kappa divided by N bigger than one minus N minus one over N kappa square. It is quite easy to see that this is bigger than 1 minus 1 over kappa square. Why? Because this quantity, n minus 1 over n, is smaller than 1. If we replace this with 1, we get sign of inequality that is changed. This guy is bigger than this guy. This is what uh, was written in the book, but I am satisfied also by this inequality. This is also Chebyshev inequality. This is coming from this estimate. We divide, put S cap on the left, all other guys on the right, and divide by N. And we get this one. Let us see if you can, my question is, if you understand this step, how we do this. We put S kappa on the left, all other guys on the right, and divide by N. Let me do this here to be more clear. We said put on the left, so we have cardinality of S kappa bigger than N minus N minus 1 over kappa square. This follows from this. Now we divide by N, and when I divide by N, I get this guy. Simply, I divide it by N. Here by N, and all this guy by N. N over N gives 1. N minus 1 over N is here. Kappa square is here. Therefore, this from here, I got this. And from this, I got this. And this for me is Chebyshev inequality. Of course, using the fact that N minus 1 is smaller than 1, we can get also the last inequality. But for me, the important thing is if you understand this step. Is it clear? OK, this for me was important. Let us now take a look at Chebyshev inequality. Uh, if you have uh, some doubts, uh, then after the break, uh, we can discuss a little bit this inequality again. This is a very important uh, step. So I shall stop. Uh, Uh, the record and uh, we shall start in a few minutes.